Well, as you can see, I am on top of a rather large hill in the middle of a cemetery. This is the Chattanooga National Cemetery in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This is also the approximate spot where General Ulysses S. Grant was standing whenever he was commanding the Battle of Chattanooga, which involved the Union troops storming of Lookout Mountain right here, and also Missionary Ridge here behind me. Now, after the Battle of Chattanooga, this area right here was selected as a burial spot for the Union soldiers, and then over the years uh, became a national cemetery, which resulted in, of course, uh, more of our deceased servicemen being buried here. We're going to be taking a look around at the Chattanooga National Cemetery today. I am quite excited because there are a lot of interesting historical things here. So in 1862, during the Civil War, uh, the, the Union forces in the East were not doing so well, but in the West, it was a different story. Under the leadership of Grant, uh, Union forces had made incursions uh, into the South and Tennessee, like at Fort Henry, Fort Donelson, uh, down into Shiloh. And whenever that happened, the Confederate forces ended up kind of withdrawing pretty much out of Tennessee uh, all the way down here to the city of Chattanooga, which, if you look, has a lot of terrain that makes it easier to defend. So Chattanooga, for all intents and purposes, became the gateway to the Deep South. Now, I came across a story not too long ago that I didn't know that is extremely fascinating about a group called Andrews Raiders. Uh, this was kind of like a, a small special ops group of the Civil War what they were doing in an effort to try and disrupt communication and the supply line from Atlanta to Chattanooga this group of like 20 to 22 people went 200 miles behind enemy lines hijacked a Confederate train and then started bringing it back up towards Chattanooga destroying rail lines uh, destroying telegraph lines doing anything they could to try and disrupt the flow of supplies and communication from Atlanta to Chattanooga. Now, uh, they ended up being captured and some of them were hung, some of them were traded uh, for other Confederate prisoners. But here at the Chattanooga National Cemetery, they have a monument to Andrews Raiders. Now, this memorial does have some special meaning. You can see that there's a train on top. The name of the train that they hijacked uh, was called the General. So that's the General up on top. And then you can see the names of the men who were executed, including James Andrews, who was, of course, the leader of the raid. Uh, wasn't in the military, he was a civilian. And then over here, they list those that escaped and then over here on the other side those who were exchanged now here is what's really cool about the Andrews raid if you look right here Some of these individuals that were a part of the raid are the first ones to have been awarded the Medal of Honor. No Medal of Honor had given out before these guys. So here's John Scott, and then this is another one of the raiders who did not receive the Medal of Honor. William Campbell, here's another Medal of Honor recipient, Marion Ross. 
George Wilson. You can see where a lot of people have visited these graves. Another Medal of Honor recipient, Samuel Robertson. Samuel Slavens. And then we get over here to Andrews himself. Now Andrews was not eligible for the Medal of Honor because he wasn't in the military. As a matter of fact, he kind of gets the honor of being buried here uh, even though he was a civilian, but was very key in planning and executing that raid. Very, very cool that some of the very first recipients of the Medal of Honor are all buried right here together. Now, anywhere I go, I'm always trying to find something that's a, a little bit different or out of the ordinary. Now, for me, this section of the cemetery here at Chattanooga definitely fits that description. This area right here is a plot filled with German soldiers from World War I. Now, there are, I think, over 70 German POWs from World War I buried right here. Now they were all held as POWs at Fort Oglethorpe. Men like Carl Schmidt and Peter Moltzen. You might be asking what in the world happened where so many of these POWs died in one place? And the answer is the Spanish flu. Spanish flu hit and killed all of these guys, along with millions of other people worldwide. Here's something else that's interesting. If you look up here, this is a monument that was set up by the people of Germany to, to honor these men that, that served and were held as POWs here in the United States. This was put up in 1935 which would have been right after Adolf Hitler took power. Now there's no swastikas on it and there's nothing and there's nothing, you know, hateful. Uh, it's just the names of all of the soldiers. So no need to, uh, you know, deface this monument or, or anything like that. It just happens to be when it was put up. Very interesting though. In my very first History Traveler video, I was at Jefferson Barracks and pointed out a few German and Italian POWs from World War II that are buried there. And I thought I'd really found something, but here at Chattanooga, holy smokes, there are a lot of Axis POWs that are buried right here. Now, probably one of the most interesting ones is this one right here. So this is Carl, boy I'm going to butcher this last name, Bulois is how I'm going to say it. Uh, this is the highest ranking German officer that is buried here at Chattanooga. He was a lieutenant general in the German army, served directly under the Desert Fox, Erwin Rommel. And uh, he was captured in North Africa and he ended up committing suicide in the POW camp that he was in. Uh, hung himself March 27th, 1945. And he's buried right here.
I was looking for another grave marker here in the cemetery and walked over to the opposite side. Now this is going to be a reinterment and I'm going to have to look up the information on it because this is James Gamble and he was in the War of 1812. So I'm kind of curious how he ended up reinterred here in a cemetery that was established during the Civil War. Interesting. Well, right or wrong, there is one particular grave here that I wanted to visit more than any other. And we've had a little bit of difficulty finding it, but I think that we finally located it and it doesn't look to have been neglected. This right here is the final resting place of Medal of Honor recipient Desmond Doss. So Desmond T. Doss, if you've seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge, then you are already well acquainted with his story. I was a conscientious objector because of his faith. Uh, didn't believe in killing people, so he served as a combat medic in the 77th Infantry Division. Uh, served all the way through uh, to the Battle of Okinawa. Was at the Maida Escarpment on what was nicknamed Hacksaw Ridge. Was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions. Where the citation says he saved 75 people, he says it was less. His, uh, his men that served with him said it was more but uh, they compromised it at 75. Uh, regardless, he, he did a good work up there. Said that while he was serving there, he kept saying, Lord, help me save one more. As you can see, he was also awarded a Bronze Star Medal and Purple Heart with two Oak Leaf Clusters. Gosh, so glad that I could come here and visit this grave. Well, that was Chattanooga National Cemetery. Quite the place. So glad that I happened to be traveling through here and could stop, visit some of these graves, pay my respects, and uh, actually learn a few new things. Uh, it wasn't until I started doing a little bit of research that I learned that the first recipients of the Medal of Honor were right here. So. If you ever happen to be going through Chattanooga, definitely make this place a stop. It is certainly worth it.